Hey guys, it's Sonia. Um, it is a stormy day, very overcast, and I'm here at the oratory. I'm here with Gunnar. It's been a project of ours for a couple of days to get to a church where we can light a candle and say some prayers for Gunnar. So this is the very famous oratory of Montreal where Brother Andre used to heal people. And uh, actually his heart is still preserved here. I mean, to the best of my knowledge, last time last time I was here, the heart was still here. I just want to light a candle so that our prayer just keeps going. We're very like, you know, I don't want to repeat myself about what happened, but I have a problem with my computer or I thought it, I didn't know if it was my my drives or my computer, but something keeps eating all my files. So like I record footage. So I had footage for videos I was going to make and it ate everything. And, and that's why I just did one live last week. So I was like, oh my God, this is it. Like, this is the end of the road for me. I am so done because now it's even eating my files. I bought two new drives. I don't want to um, oops, plug them into the computer at all in case they also get infected. But no, it's totally screwed. So anyway, we just need prayer. I'm actually really happy we got out of the house yesterday. It was a horrible day. Gunnar's been having a really, really hard time. It's like he's just so depressed because like everything went wrong. He failed everything at school and the school wants to kick him out just for failing his classes. And like I said, they're full of shit. They don't have a right to do that. But they're like, we strongly suggest they want to put him in a program for kids with learning disabilities. And I'm like, but he was on the honor roll in the first session. And, and they were like, yes, but he failed the other two. And it's like, look, if he was on the honor roll and you know Gunnar, and if he was on the honor roll, he doesn't have learning disabilities. He's not diagnosed with them. He's had good grades. He's been, you know, that's bull. And they know it. They absolutely know it's bullshit. And, and so it's kids with learning disabilities and behavior problems. That usually means aggression. And he's not aggressive. He doesn't belong in the school. It's going to be a bunch of delinquents. They're going to do drugs. It's just not the place for him. I can't even believe the principal is... Is, is trying to use that as an excuse. Like I can almost picture them sitting around at the, at the table and being like, well, he did fail his classes. We could say he has a learning disability and then they'll have to take him. Anyway, I don't accept it and I, I will not accept the transfer because that every other time it was the school plus the school board transferring him. It happened like three other times and I, I didn't realize that I had any choice in the matter. And the last time I was already homeschooling him and the school board talked me into putting him in this school and they said, they specialize, they have a special autism class and they, they like practically like pleaded with me to give them another chance and I did and he was there for two years it was fine and this year like I don't know something went wrong and now their solution is to do what they did before no way over my dead body it's not happening but honestly there's a plane <laughs> I don't I don't feel like I'm up for homeschooling him and I don't want him to be alone at home all the time Anyway, that's the deal and also like his friend left and also decided he didn't want to be friends with him So now we're back to being like kind of in limbo um, So here is the beautiful view <sighs> Sorry guys, I just had to uh, like give you the, the down low. Sorry if it was a bit ranty It's because I don't want to take forever like making this video. I just want <coughs> I just want to show you a little bit about how beautiful it is here What a nice view we have and also like just tell you why we're here and you guys kind of know what we've been dealing with. I mean, you guys have been in, in it with us for like the long haul. Come on, baby. Okay, that's the exit. I, th I think we just came in the exit. Um, so actually, so there's there's all this. It's the crypt and the chapel. I think we just want to go see the main part of the church. It's the gift shop. There's Brother Andre. And then you, you can get your rosaries and all that religious stuff in here. Look, you, can, you buy the bottle for the holy water and then you go and fill it up inside. And you get a, get a bottle of holy water? Okay. Yeah, holy oil. I had a, an apartment once where I put that holy oil everywhere. So here's our famous oratory. So we have to go all the way down, three floors. We're supposed to go, oh, we have to go down some more. This is a major tourist attraction. Oh, it's starting to smell like candles in here. Oh, wow. 
wow. Oh, there you look. Look at all the candles. The altar for St. Joseph. And it says a patron saint of um, workers. Uh, St. Joseph, guardian of virgins. And then over here, you know, these are the the crutches and the canes of all the people who back in the day came up here to see Brother Andre and were healed and left their crutches and canes behind. That's that's the story here. There's tons Pretty of them. Recent. Pretty recent? Oh yeah, that one's a metal one, yeah. So that's not even that long ago. Brother Andre healed so many people. So this is this place is known to be a place of healing. And people make pilgrimages here when they have special prayers for healing or something very, very important. Another altar to St. Joseph. You know, I noticed there's like a ton of Indians here and I'm thinking, I wonder if they kind of like see parallels between this and Hinduism because like I mean honestly because the Hindus do similar things they have like altars to different gods or we have altars to different saints in the Catholic Church yeah I know they're tourists but I wonder like what they think of this when they see a Catholic Church or they're like oh yeah you know here's another altar it's like a different way of doing it another altar for St. Joseph because it is St. Joseph's oratory Oh, what this says, St. Joseph, terror of the demons. So like the demon chaser. So St. Joseph does a lot of things. Like over there, he hears the prayers of the workers. He's the guardian of the virgins. He is the demon chaser. All right, what does it say here? Oh, courageous Joseph advised by an angel. You confront your fears of the unknown. Your light shines brightly, penetrating the dark corners of your being. Your fears disperse, you rediscover your true face and actively participate in the divine project, reuniting mother and child and the people with their God. Together with Mary and Jesus, you dwell in the love of God. Help us to rediscover the united core of our identities beyond all internal fears. Counsel us so we may build a better world to welcome the coming kingdom shed your light on our inner lives that freed from the grip of our fears our decisions may be founded in love may the face of god shine on us amen that's what it says for this one so that's like for facing your fears here okay here we have more crutches and it said thanks up there and with this one, um, you can actually go up the sides and uh, light a candle here. Prayer to St. Joseph to obtain a special favor. So that's what this is for. It's kind of dark here. Uh, personally, I'm not actually Catholic, so I don't pray to saints. I mean, I've done it a couple times where I like ask a saint to intercede just to see. But I don't feel comfortable doing that. I just pray to God. But I will go to a church, including a Catholic church, and I'll, I'll light a candle and I'll say a prayer to God. And then I actually came up here a few years ago. I had a friend who was having a really bad problem with his um, ex. And there was a really horrible like custody battle with a lot of nasty stuff going on. And they had taken the child away from both of them and put her in foster care. And the mother had a lot of mental health issues and she was accusing him of stuff he wasn't doing. And I came up here, I made a video about it too. And I lit a candle and I said a prayer and, and actually they, the, the daughter was reunited with her father and he got sole custody. So she came out of foster care and went to live with him. So that prayer was answered. So it's like sometimes when you really need answer to prayer, I, know, I like to go like the extra mile and light a candle. I'm gonna take you into the tomb of Brother Andre. I hope it's okay I can film in here. I think so. So, um, actually it's just like a small 
like around the room like this. And if I remember correctly, his heart is here, or it was. Oh, okay, well, he's in there. Um, I think the heart is somewhere else. Okay, so that's the tomb. Wow. Yeah. You really feel like an energy in here, though. And you gotta pick uh, which altar you want to light a candle at. So this one, if it's to support for for your family, it's it's only two dollars. And that one over there, also, it's a special favor. It's only two dollars. But this one, if you want to fight your demons, it's six dollars. I think Anna's gonna go for this altar. Fight your fears your demons. You want to light a candle here? It's okay. I'll give you the money for it. Put it in. Yeah, this is this is a VIP. That's a very important prayer. So we're going to go all out. Okay, take one of those. Okay. And then you're going to light you're going to light it on one of them and you're going to light a new candle with it. Okay. All right. Good job. Okay. Then you just come and say your prayer over here. I'll say a prayer with you. Okay, well, we said a prayer to God for ourselves and our family and also for Aaron. And now we're going to say one here. We're going to go up here and we're going to light another candle. And we're going to ask God for a special um, miracle for Gunnar with his educational situation so that he could complete high school. I mean, it's in God's hands, but we just want to have peace about it, and we want it to be whatever is in Gutter's best interest, and certainly not what the principal is wanting, because I don't think that's in his best interest. But we don't know, right? Because only God knows. So, right, we're going to turn it over to God, right, honey? And we're going to ask for favor and for miracles for you. And since I actually just said all the stuff that we were praying for, I'm just going to add to it in Jesus' name, amen to that. And I'm going to ask you guys to pray for that for us too. It's been really hard. So we just pray for that tough piece about it and for God's taking care of Gunnar with his educational situation and to you know, bless our family. And I pray for that in Jesus' name, amen. It's the holy water. And take a bit home just for extra protection. I bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. I wanted to show you this is the main chapel. This is where they have services. This is the chapel, the old one. And then over there is um, the St. Joseph, oops, with baby Jesus. And uh, in the back there, this, the confessionals and the organ. And you see it. Oh my gosh, look, it's the rock. Trying to zoom out. It's the rock that this was cut out of. Oh my gosh, people are like putting prayers in. Is that what this is? Money. No, no, that's not money. These are prayers. Money. Where? Oh, coins and stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, people throw their money in there like, a, like in a fountain. Oh, we should do that. We should put our prayer in the wall. But is it just... Oh, it's like a special paper that you put your prayer request on and you put it inside. That's like what the Jews do at the Wailing Wall in Jerusalem. I think that's what they do. The Western Wall or whatever. They also, they put little papers in there with their prayers. I wrote a letter to God asking for a miracle so that Gunnar could finish high school and also have a post-secondary education and that he could do something, have a, have a profession in his life and do something that he enjoys. 
and to pray for him to be um, relieved of all the autism related issues that hold him back and for God's peace to be with him. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm going to put it here in the wall. We're going to do all the things while we're here. Wow, I'm really glad that we got to hear the organist. That was very encouraging to me. Uh, mainly because they made a ton of mistakes, so it goes to show that if I really need to have another side hustle, I could work as an organist. <laughs> Did you hear how many mistakes they made? Yeah. And they were fumbling everywhere. It was like butterfingers on the organ. And I was like, wow, you can play the organ that fumbly and still get a gig? Like, hey, sign me up. I can do that. I can fumble around on the organ. I could rock that stuff, man. <laughs> Oh wow, we're here at the lookout. Look outside, it's raining so heavily and with all the smog on top of it, it's totally gray and you can't see anything. Wow. It's super foggy. Hey, did you notice like Notice like everyone who is Indian here today must have been like an Indian tour group or something. Tons of seats. Yeah, tons. Hey guys, that's it for us for our little trip to the oratory. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, it's up to God now, I guess. We did what we could. We sent a lot of prayers. We lit a lot of candles. And, uh, I, I feel fine, like personally, I feel okay. I feel like uh, I trust God. Um, let's just hope that it stays peaceful and quiet in the house. Anyway, that's it for our oratory trip. Gunnar is um, sulking a bit right now. And uh, so he's not gonna say goodbye, but I just wanna say thanks for coming with us. I hope that you like the tour. Thanks for joining me in the chat. Thanks for your support and your prayers, you guys. And thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.